Movie House Productions obtained a copy of Central High School's Class of 1905 25th Anniversary Book. Central High's old campus was located at Broad and Green in Philadelphia's Spring Garden section. The class produced physicians, bankers, attorneys, businessmen, and writer and radio commentator Alexander Wilcott. The aging class of 200 men captured at play were asked their opinions on important subjects. Their views revealed much about the world in 1930. Do you believe capital punishment should be abolished? 30 men of Central High said yes, but 90 said no. Do you favor an open Sunday for Philadelphia, allowing professional baseball, football, and moving picture shows? Yes, said 75 men of Central High. No, 54. Are you in favor of a modification of the Volstead Act? making lawful the sale of beer and light wine. Yes, said 98. No, said 32 men of Central. Would you vote for a woman for President of the United States? Yes, 15. No, said 112 men of Central High. Do you believe co-ed high schools are better than separate schools for boys and girls? Yes, said 43. No, said 81 men of Central High School in 1930. The Devon and Mayfair was the last dinosaur, the final single-screen neighborhood theater in the city of Philadelphia. The owner of the old Belgrade movies in Port Richmond gave the Devon a short reprieve from the anonymous burial of other city movie houses. The Devon was a reminder of a magical era when it was a thrill to stroll down the avenue to take in a cartoon, a short subject, and a double feature on a screen whose size would literally pop your eyes. The old movie house certainly had its moments. In the 1970s, to keep it off life support, the Devon showed softcore porn films and neighbors rudely called it the Dirty Devon. For a while, the Devon had a 99 cent admission policy. The problem was that kids threw the penny change and ripped holes in the Devon's silver screen. Management retaliated by raising admission to a buck. The same things that killed other neighborhood theaters. Television, multiplexes, and home video made the Devon extinct. The Devon's images now only flicker in our memories. The Widener Memorial Industrial Training School was founded by Philadelphia streetcar king Peter A. B. Widener as a memorial to both his wife Josephine and son Harry. Widener bought the old 30-acre Rogers property at Broad and Olney in 1902. Designed by noted architect Horace Trumbauer, the Widener School served as a combined hospital, home, and training school for children with orthopedic problems. Except for occasional family visits, the children spent all their time through high school at Widener with teachers, doctors, and nurses. The Widener School taught Sloyd, a Swedish system of teaching use of tools through wood carving. Instruction was offered in innumerable trades including farming, gardening, care of poultry and livestock, use and care of machines, elevator operation, leather work and shoemaking, dress making and millinery, telegraphy, stenography, library work, engraving, and the domestic arts of cooking, housekeeping, and laundering. Mr. Widener acquired a property in Longport, New Jersey as a summer vacation home for the children. By 1941, the concept of combining medical care with residential schooling fell out of favor. With a wider vision, the new Widener Memorial School opened at the same location in 1953. The school remains dedicated 
to the education and training of physically challenged Philadelphia School District students. Directly across Broad Street from the Widener School stands a wonderful place. The Henry S. Frank Memorial Synagogue is almost hidden on the green at Albert Einstein Medical Center behind the impressive columns which once supported the first mint of the United States in Philadelphia. The synagogue was dedicated in 1901 in memory of Henry S. Frank, a member of the Jewish Hospital Board. The Jewish Hospital changed its name to Albert Einstein in 1952. It was designed by New York architect Arnold W. Bruner in collaboration with Philadelphia's famous Frank Furness firm. Built of Indiana limestone and oak woodwork, the Frank Synagogue was reminiscent of Kafar Baram, a second century synagogue in the Galilee of Israel. In 1957, the synagogue was dismantled and converted to offices for reasons unclear. Some thought its religious association would jeopardize funding. Others felt it didn't fit the image of a modern hospital. In 1982, the synagogue was fully restored. The Frank Synagogue, a pride of the Broad and Olney area and of Philadelphia, is listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. Thank <laughs> you.